Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and you're watching The Best JS. In this video, I'm going to show you how to better debug your React and Redux applications using some middleware known as Redux Logger. Okay, so I made a very simple application. You can see it right here. And uh, whenever you click on the scrolling icon right here, um, this dispatches an action to my Redux store uh, and adds a new card to my list. And this is just all fake data, and the styling's not pretty, but uh, that doesn't matter for this example. Uh, point is, whenever I click this button, an action gets dispatched, and my reducer adds a new card to uh, my people uh, reducer. Uh, and if I click the remove button, right, same thing is happening. Okay, an action gets dispatched, and my Basically, my reducer updates the store and removes uh, the card that I selected. So, how can I, you know, how can I track what actions are getting dispatched and how that changes my store? Um, a lot of times, when you're you know, writing Redux applications, you're going to come across some very unusual bugs, and it, it would be very helpful to know what you're actually dispatching. Um, and uh, and how your state is getting updated. So there's a piece of Redux uh, middleware known as Redux Logger, and I'm going to show you how to use it. It's very simple. All right, so I'm going to scroll over just one more over here. I'm going to stop my development server, server, and I'm going to npm install or yarn add another module. So yarn add Redux Logger, just like that. All right, we're going to run it. Okay, and give it a second right there. All right, that looks good. All right, so now I'm back over to my text editor. And um, if you've been doing some React and even so, a couple of Redux uh, tutorials, you're probably familiar with uh, this file. This file is your, your main application entry point. Uh, it's where you wrap the, the app. Uh, with your uh, Redux provider component, and uh, you're doing all of your setting up. So if you have a file like this, it's probably going to live in the root uh, of your project or inside of SRC, the source directory. Uh, but you should probably already have a file like this. And if you don't know what this file is or what it does, maybe this uh, video isn't for you quite yet. Uh, but anyway, it, let's open up this file and import that logger that we've just in, um, installed. So import logger from Redux logger. And right here, I've already got it set up, uh, but you have this apply middleware helper function from the Redux library. And because Redux logger is a piece of middleware, um, then we can just plop it right in there. And no matter, um, no matter what you have, um, maybe you have like other pieces of middleware, uh, perhaps Redux Thunk or Redux Promise or, or something else. Uh, always, always, always put logger last. So if you have uh, Thunk or some other things, um, that's cool. The order of that middleware doesn't matter, but the, um, uh, the maintainers and people who have written Redux Logger, they recommend that you put it last. All right, so we're going to use the apply middleware helper function and pass in logger, Redux logger, as the last argument. And that's it. Okay, so let's save that. Okay, and let's go back to the terminal. We'll start it back up again. It's going to restart my app. Okay. All right, cool. And that's just the default one. I'm going to open up my dev tools, go to the dev developer tools, and we'll have, uh, we'll just go to the console right here. And now whenever I dispatch an action anywhere in my uh, application, look at that. This appears in the console. That's pretty darn cool. So we have an action called add person. This was the state before we dispatched the action. This is the action itself, so we have a, a type of add person, and this is the payload, which is an object. 
And we have a, a couple of properties in this object, including a first and last name, a unique ID, and uh, some other properties as well. And this is the state after. Okay, so before there was zero people objects in my people array, and now we have one people object in my people array. And I can just keep clicking and clicking and clicking, and it will update right here. Uh, conversely, I can remove all of these as well, and it'll still catch it. All right, now one thing that you might uh, notice, like right off the bat, is, okay, this is pretty cool, but um, all of these actions, um, they are they are um, expanded, you know, by default. Uh, how can we make it collapsed so that it appears like this? Um, because your application might be dispatching, you know, several um, actions, you know, every second, and, and that can really, you know, stack up very quickly, add up very quickly, if they're all um, expanded, you know, by default. Well, Redux Logger has some very good documentation, and uh, this is a really simple thing to fix. So let's go back to our text editor, okay, over here, and on line five where we imported Redux Logger, let's actually use some destructuring, and we will get create logger, okay, lowercase c, and capital L. And then down below, like somewhere around here, let's create a new variable called logger, and we're going to use the create logger helper function. Let's instantiate it, and we'll pass it a configuration object with a property collapse is true. So now if we save it, go back, that looks good, let's go back here, okay, and uh, never mind this, this is just a warning telling me I should add a key prop. Aha, now whenever Redux Logger logs the action being dispatched, now it is collapsed, um, it is collapsed, um, you know, uh, automatically. And if I want to inspect a specific one, then I can uh, expand it, collapse it, and all is good. Okay, very nice. Now there's one other thing I would like to mention to you before we conclude the video. Uh, obviously, this is a very useful tool uh, for you know development uh, for us developers. But whenever you deploy your site, um, you know, in, in you know to the real world, then you don't want to expose. Um, this Redux logger in the console. Uh, it could potentially, you know, give away, you know, some vulnerabilities in your application, uh, but it's just not necessary um, to, um, you know, expose this logger in production. So there's a very easy way to get around that. So what I would like uh, to do is I have, you know, a an array, we'll call it middleware, and this middleware will contain all of the middleware that uh, I need for my application to work. Uh, so in that case, it might be Thunk. Uh, it might be, you know, Redux Saga. It might be Redux Promise, like whatever you want. Um, but if you have more than one uh, Redux, um, you know, piece of middleware, go ahead and put it in your middleware array. In this case, we don't have any other pieces of middleware, so we'll just, um, yeah, we'll just make it an empty array. And then what we will do is a quick if statement. So if, let's bring this on another line, if process.env.environment, if it equals, or rather if it does not equal production, then Then we will middleware dot push logger, and then in here we can use the good old uh, spread rest operator to include it. So now, if we save it, let's go back to the terminal. That looks good. Let's go back to the browser. Let's refresh. Never mind. This is a key warning. It's not a big deal, and it still works all the same. Uh, but I am in a development environment. So this process.env business, uh, basically uh, this is an environment variable, 
and um, and whenever you're starting up a project locally, um, chances are your environment is not going to be production. It's going to be local or development or maybe integration or staging. Um, and, and this bit of conditional logic right here will ensure that we only include logger, Redux logger, so long as we are not in a production environment. Uh, Okie dokie, that's all I wanted to show you today. Thank you so much for watching. And, uh, and as always, if you have any questions um, or comments, uh, just uh, leave uh, your questions and comments below and I'll get back to you. All right, that's it for now. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.